Hey, this video is from our technician, Bert, and he's talking through the replacement of a contactor. And so there's two reasons to consider replacing a contactor. One is, is that that voltage drop can drop the voltage to the compressor, which of course reduces the system's uh, capacity, efficiency, all that, and you need to have the rated voltage applied. But then also when that contactor starts to overheat, it's more likely that either it will fail open so it doesn't allow the system to run, or it will fail fused, which means that it runs all the time, potentially. This is especially important on three-phase contactors. So if you're working on commercial units with three-phase contactors, you need to take very seriously inspecting those contactors and replacing them when they begin to fail. Because in three-phase, if you only have one contact that's not making contact, that will create something called single phasing, which can quickly burn up a compressor. In single phase, which is what we're looking at here in residential, it's not as big of a deal, but it is something that I suggest when it gets to the point that Bert shows here in the video that we at least talk about it with the customer and let them make the decision of whether or not they want to replace it. A lot of people will see this as a um, like an upsell sales tactic or something like that. I don't advocate doing it that way. No high pressure sales, just simply showing it to the customer and letting them decide when it gets to about the point that Bert shows here. It's really the one he's showing here, pretty much right on the line of where we would suggest it. Um, to the customer is something they may want to go ahead and address. He does a nice video here showing what to kind of think about when you replace it and some of his little quick tips. Some of them you may like, some of you may, you may not, but I want to kind of address them as we go along. So here's Bert with his apprentice Kirby. Hey guys, it's Kirby and I, and we're doing a maintenance. And, uh, we ran into a problem, pretty common, um, go ahead and show here the contactor. Let's take a look at that. What does it look like, Kirby? Uh, it looks black and fitted. Yep, that's exactly what it looks like. So, pretty common problem, but it's really important on a maintenance to actually be inspecting things like this, details like this, like the contactor. Um, show them what you had to pull off. So this is this cover right here. Yeah, slide it back on. So you can see, there's not really any way of knowing that that's going on, that we have a problem just about to happen. Unless you open that up, that extra step, and take a look. We, we brought the customer out, talked to him about this, showed him that. It was a visual thing about the importance of it. Here, take a look at the new one. We pulled the cover off so you can see. So look at the difference there. Lift it up so you can see the connection points, how clean those pads are. And that's where all of our voltage to our compressor and fan motor pass through. All right, new contactor, about to go in. Old contactor needs to come out. So we've already turned off our breaker out here. So Kirby's not getting shocked right now. We've already turned off our breaker inside because there's low voltage on, on each side of this coil. And uh, another thing you can do if you're not inside by the breaker is pull this plug on the defrost board, the heat pump, and you don't have any low voltage there so you don't blow the fuse unnecessarily. Before you start this process, check if you have a wiring diagram still available on the panel. If not, take pictures. Either way, Take pictures. Save yourself the trouble of um, tripping the breaker or shorting out a compressor. So I pulled this contactor, as you can see, apart a little bit here, taking the pads off. And you can see the texture on there, how those pads are starting to get tore up. And that happens every time it arcs. So it pulls in and there's actually an arc and the worse connection it has on contact the stronger it's going to arc and it gets so hot it literally starts melting and that's what you're seeing right there that's where the pitting's coming from and the black all around just shows you how much it's been arcing now this was running without any problem but it wasn't going to be long before we start having problems and the potential for problems is actually really big you can get uh, a failed compressor just from having a contactor that either pits and actually melts in place. So this pad right here will melt onto this pad and your contactor is forced in. It doesn't ever shut off. 
The other problem is, is that when these pull in, that is when your compressor is pulling the strongest amount of current. So let's look at this data tag here. Locked rotor amps, 158. Every time that compressor starts, it's in the position of a locked rotor amps. And all that current has to come through here, pass through these two points, through these pads. So the moment it pulls in, it starts that, that surge of current. And for the next couple seconds, there's a lot higher current than the normal run current through those pads. That's why it's important that that connection is clean and your voltage can pass cleanly through there. Every once in a while you'll have it to where it's pulling in but there's just a slight voltage drop and you will cause compressor fail that way too. So we need to cut these wires, right? And put the different type of... Yes, we do. Put on them. Yep. Yeah, let me go ahead and show what I do there. Okay. Let me grab this. All right. Right here. So I'm gonna cut off the end. Like that. Now specifically, you see he cuts those ends off. Some of you are gonna gripe about that, but frankly, I've done that very same thing many, many times in the field. And yes, there is a copper and potentially a steel connection there, but there is anyway, right? I mean, if you leave the spade connected under a screw, you still have that same sort of connection. And so I'm totally okay with him doing that. I've done it for many, many years. We're gonna take this right here and actually stick it down in there. We'll put a little electric grease on there and clamp down onto that which is a little bit of a better connection than actually clamping onto the wires and uh, smashing down on the copper. You can see how thin these braided wires are. Um, so I like using this a little bit better. It's just kind of a quick way of making this a better connection. So Kirby's got it right. Secure the contactor before you put any of the wiring in. So now comes the part that Kirby, you're going to do this by memory, mm -hmm. she tells me he's not going to get it wrong. Exactly right. Not sure if this guy's memory is. Sorry, electrical grease disconnector? Yep. Yep. There you go. You grab another contact here. Just make it tight. Snug. All done. Oh, 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 inspection. <laughs> now I want to specifically address, he put some electric grease on here and I was, I was torn. It was, it was one of these things where I thought about just editing it out where he put the electric grease on, because I know that a lot of people will have a problem with that. Um, and the reason they'll have a problem with it is because they kind of should have a problem with it. Um, some people will say it's dielectric grease. That means that it doesn't conduct. And while that is true, the design of dielectric grease, or in this case, it looks like he used no locks, which is specifically designed as an anti-corrosive for connections between aluminum and copper. It, it, it's designed to help prevent corrosion, and so it will help on that side, but potentially if you don't get it snug down, you may not make as great of a connection under there. It's something that technicians do every day out in the field. Um, I've already instructed Bert not to do that anymore because it isn't, it isn't really the designed application for it. Um, but frankly, it's not going to hurt anything as long as you are getting a nice snug connection um, in between. And, and when you read the spec sheets on these, it, it really is sort of a complicated topic. It's not it's not straightforward as far as if it's a good thing or if it's a bad thing in cases like this. Um, especially when you're dealing with lower voltages, it gets more risky because now you do, you have more potential for um, for voltage drop to be an issue. In this case, I decided to show it just to address it. Um, again, look at the listing and labeling instructions of anything that you're going to put on anything. And if you were to look at the data tag on no locks, you would see that it's specifically designed as an anti-corrosive for connections in between aluminum and copper. And because of that, I mean, really, it, can it cause a problem? I, I doubt it. If it's designed to be put on those connections, I'm sure it's not going to cause a problem where it's connected inside this contactor. But it's just something that, that I'm not going to suggest that we do moving forward. But for the sake of authenticity, we left it in the video. All done. Oh, 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 inspection! Mm. So this symbol right here is for an open switch, right here. So both sides of these are open normally. When they get the voltage, they close. And then out of the top of each of that, you have your wires. 
the colors, and what motors or function they're going towards. And so that's what you need to look at. So we'll start with our low voltage. What do we have coming off of our coil? Here's your coil. We have blue and blue tied onto that side, mm -hmm. and black over here. Just confirm that. Yep, hooked up to our coil. And that's what you do, you just go through that process. Now when there's been like motor replacement, compressor replacement, your colors aren't going to be the same. But they're always going to go to the same motor. And you can see here, here's your compressor, here's your fan, and the color's coming off of that, down to here, your capacitor, where's that wire being connected to, what color is that? Great. Good. Looks good? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Confident we can turn this on? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, let's go ahead and put this uh, cover on. Help keep okay. help keep the ants out. And it's just it's just a little safer when the power's off. You know what I mean? <laughs> this is crucial. All right, Kirby's pretty sure that he's ready. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. It worked. Nothing blew up. A couple other things I would have liked him to show is actually testing the meter to a known voltage source and actually checking to make sure that there is no voltage rather than trusting a disconnect. He doesn't show what he did there, but that's something that I want to make sure that we do uh, as part of the electrical test procedure. And then in addition to that, checking that voltage drop across the contacts before and after, as well as applied voltage before and after under load. So it has to, has to actually be running. The other thing is when you flip a breaker on, I always want to see an amp clamp on that compressor lead, so that way you can monitor it as that compressor comes on. Um, I like what he suggested as far as taking pictures, uh, so that way you make sure that you wire it up properly. And also, he, he showed it snug down well. He used a, a good insulated screwdriver there, which is wise. But uh, if you were going to be really technically correct, you would use a torque screwdriver. I know it's one of those things that almost nobody's going to do in residential, but it's just worth mentioning. And that contactor does have a torque spec on it, and so you could torque it down to the inch pounds that that particular lug was designed for. That would be a little bit more technically correct. So a lot of things that I have to kind of mention there, but in general, um, I'm a fan of authenticity and learning as we uh, as we go and getting better and our practices as we move forward. So I think this is a teachable moment for, for all of us, and hopefully you learned something in the video. Thanks for watching. <laughs>